Okay, let's learn some algebra step by step. And we're going to tackle this problem in uh, this particular video. And what we have here is x to the fifth power being divided by x to the seventh power. And what we want to do is simplify this expression. So if you know how to do this problem, go to put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer here in just one second. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you uh, three uh, different ways you can do this problem. And uh, one of those ways I think is very easy to understand. But uh, by the time you leave this video, you're going to see and believe that, yes, indeed, this was easy to do. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And if you really want to uh, kind of learn math from a math teacher that can explain things in a clear and understandable way, okay, really kind of, you know, give you what you need to know to be successful at mathematics, then check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the answer. Again, we have x to the fifth being divided by x to the seventh. What is the answer? Well, the answer is the following. We have one over x squared. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, that is awesome. Matter of fact, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. You can tell your friends and family that indeed you are an expert. I don't know if you're a total expert, but you definitely know something about powers and exponents in algebra. Okay, now if you're confused, uh, this is not that difficult. Matter of fact, this is downright easy. Okay, so I'm going to explain this problem uh, using kind of three models, all right? So the first is, let's just kind of understand what's going on here. So we have x to the fifth. What does that mean? Well, uh, in algebra, this means we have x being multiplied by itself five times. So this is going to be x times x times x times x times x. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that's all x to the fifth means. And then uh, x to the seventh means we have x being multiplied by itself seven times. So let's go write that down here. One, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So uh, this is what we would call ex the expanded form of a power. Now, uh, a rule in mathematics is the following, okay? These things are called factors. Notice they're being, uh, we have a product, right? That's uh, something that's um, the result of multiplication. So these th uh, individual components, let's say I have 10, right? 10 is equal to 2 times 5. 2 and 5 are the factors of 10, or the product of 2 and 5 is 10. OK, so let me just kind of um, use this ba basic example. If we have the fraction 10 over 20, OK, I can say, well, you know, what? Uh, 10 is the same thing as 1 times 10 and 20 is the same thing as 2 times 10. So in math, if you have common factors in the numerator and denominator, like right here, we can cross cancel those. Those can go away and we're left with the answer one half. So 10 over 20 is equal to 1 half. So what we're looking for is common factors uh, in uh, the numerator and denominator. Again, the numerator is the top part of a fraction, and uh, the denominator is the bottom part. So looking right here, we have a whole bunch of common factors. So this x can cross-cancel this x. Uh, this x can cross-cancel this x. It's one for one. This one can cross-cancel this one, and this one can cross-cancel that one. And we got this one, cross-canceling this one. So we have one, two, three, four, five x's cross-canceling with these five x's down here. And we're left with x times x, which is what down here in the denominator. It's the same thing as x squared. Now, up in the numerator, uh, we don't have anything, but uh, we always have one as a factor. So we have one in uh, the numerator and x squared right down here in the denominator. So our answer is 1 over x squared. So hopefully this is uh, pretty easy for you to kind of grasp. Uh, now, if you uh, are kind of struggling with this, a um, couple things here. One, you probably need to do some review on fractions uh, and or, uh, you know, obviously powers and exponents. So I'm going to suggest checking out um, one or two of my math courses, all depending on what level you're at, uh, pre-algebra, 
if you need some fraction reviews. I also teach powers and exponents in that course as well and or Algebra 1, okay? So this is kind of the level of math we're talking about. Okay, so 1 over x squared is the answer. Now let's talk about two other ways you can do this problem. And uh, these two methods or approaches are kind of using uh, some properties of um, exponents, things that you need to know. But I'm going to basically show you here real quick what you can do. Okay, so the first is uh, we are dividing powers, okay? So we can see here we have one power being divided by another power, and there is a rule in algebra that says a to the m over a to the n is equal to a over m minus n. Now that seems pretty complex, but basically what it says here is this. If you have a power and their base, the, uh, when you look at a power like 2 to the 4th, the base is 2, and the 4 here is the exponent, okay? The entire thing is a power. So if, if we have the same base, in this case we do, it's x and x, what we can do when we're dividing is subtract the exponents, okay? What we do, we take the top exponent, and uh, it's, that's going to be first minus this uh, denominator's exponent, okay? So the exponent of the numerator, and we're going to take away uh, uh, subtract that away from the uh, minus the denominator's exponent, right? <laughs> kind of stumbling in my words a bit. All right, so let's go ahead and show you this rule in action. So it's probably easier to uh, show it than to explain it. So what we could do is take um, these two powers and simply subtract the exponents. But the first number here is the exponent from the numerator. Okay, so that's going to be 5, right? So it's going to be equal to, and we kind of write it this way, 5 minus 7, okay, 5 minus 7, not 7 minus 5. The order does make a difference. It's always going to be the uh, exponent in the numerator, okay, first, and then the denominator, just like this. So what do we have here? So we have x to 5 minus 7, so that's x to the negative 2 power. Now, um, effectively, we are done. But remember, I said the answer is 1 over x squared. So why is that? Well, we don't like to uh, leave our answers uh, in algebra with a negative exponent. And there's another rule, and that rule is this. a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. So effectively, when you have a negative exponent, we can uh, put that over 1, and it becomes positive. So that becomes 1 over x squared. Okay, again, it's following another property or uh, law of powers and exponents. Now, these uh, properties that I'm going over are things you absolutely need to know in algebra. Okay, but uh, just doing this problem, you know, hopefully this first kind of way to look at it is pretty easy. The, the problem here is that we're working with, um, you know, lower numbers, 5 and 7. If this was like 55 and this was 702, well, you don't want to write out a whole bunch of x's, right? You want to, you know, start subtracting these exponents. But there is a kind of a third way that uh, you can think about doing this problem, and it's a bit of an offtake of um, this last property. Matter of fact, let me write this back up here. a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. And uh, another way you can kind of think of that rule is the following. I can take this x to the fifth, and I can move it down into the denominator, okay? You're allowed to take um, any power that you want. If I got a power in the denominator, I can move it up into the numerator. If I got something up in the numerator, I can move it. I can um, move my powers between the numerator and denominator, okay? But there's a little bit of a rule, uh, a, little, uh, a little bit of a change that you need to make. So... If I want to write my x to the fifth, kind of rewrite this problem where x to the fifth is down in the denominator, the rule is the following. Whatever the sign of that exponent is, it needs to become the opposite. Okay, so uh, for example, we're going to put this x to the fifth down next to this x to the seventh. And when I do that, instead of being x to a positive five, it's going to become x to a negative five. So it's going to be x to a negative five. And that's going to be times x to the seventh. Okay. Now, when I move this down into the denominator, uh, there's not like zero left. There's always a one in its place. Okay. So now we have one over x to the negative fifth times x to the seventh. Okay. So now we're going to use another property. So down here, 
we're dealing with multiplication of powers, okay? And these powers have the same base. So what we need to do is add the exponents, okay? So this is following the rule a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n, okay? So again, when you have the same base, you're going to add the exponents. So negative 5 plus 7 is going to be uh, 2x squared. So now we have 1 over x squared. Okay, so we looked at this problem, you know, in three different kind of ways. But uh, the main idea here is that, you know, uh, some of the main concepts of algebra are not that difficult. Okay, what gets more interesting is when you start doing more advanced algebra problems. Okay, you're definitely going to have to understand all these properties and laws of not only powers and exponents, but much, much more to be successful in algebra. But you absolutely can. Uh, but the bottom line is this, you're going to have to learn these skills one step at a time. So make sure you get the support you need and the instruction you need because the instruction you're getting is going to make all the difference in the world whether in fact you're going to actually understand this stuff. Okay. Well, hopefully this little video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.